A Corbin second grader who died yesterday is giving at least one other person a second chance at life thanks to his heart of gold. And will not County continue to have an ambulance service? The community now faces the question of who will serve them and how far they will have to travel. Plus, it's been a bit, but showers and storms make a return to the forecast later this week. That breakdown ahead as Mountain News at 6 starts now. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 6. We are learning more information about a terrible story out of Corbin today. Corbin Primary School second grader Eli Hill died yesterday after a basketball goal backboard fell on top of him. Hill was taken to the University of Kentucky Medical Center where he later died. But Hill's story does not end there. Chad Hedrick is in Corbin with the latest. Your heart just breaks for this family as they process this tragedy and mourn their young boy who they say gave so much in his short life. The Hills say their son Eli was so special and is leaving a lasting impact. He was kind, loved, had a great knowledge in sports and was a great friend. He was playing a sport he loved, basketball, when the freak accident happened and the backboard in their driveway fell. His parents say the grief is coming in waves, but they are wanting to share their son's story for a couple of reasons. They want parents to never miss a chance to tell your children you love them and to also take them to church. His mom Ashley saying she knows her boy is in the arms of Jesus and she will see him again. Right now she is remembering her favorite memories of her energetic eight year old. You know, Eli was only eight, but in his eight years, he has shined his light so bright, so bright. And, and we're just so proud of him. We are just so proud of, of the legacy he's left behind. And Eli's organs were donated, including what his parents call his heart of gold, taking real comfort knowing that he is giving the precious gift of life to others. Coming up in our later newscast, you'll hear more about how they are remembering their precious little boy. In Corbin, Chad Hedrick, WYMT Mountain News. Thank you, Chad. A tough story to report for sure. First Baptist Church in Corbin opened up their sanctuary today for anyone who needed a place to grieve, pray, or just talk to someone about Eli's death. A Perry County man is charged with attempted murder. Deputies say 44-year-old Anthony David Stedham of Crypton is accused of making threats toward someone, then going to his home the next day and firing shots. The shots hit the home of a man and woman. Stidham is charged with attempted murder and terroristic threatening and was taken to the Kentucky River Regional Jail. An impeachment trial for a Commonwealth's attorney accused of serious unethical offenses took place at the state capitol today. Ronnie Lee Goldie was the Commonwealth's attorney for Bath, Rowan, Montgomery, and Menifee counties. He resigned amid accusations he did favors for a defendant. The allegations center around the contact between Goldie and defendant Misty Helton. Doing favors in return for um, for for pictures, for new pictures and videos. Uh, we're talking about uh, the giving of remuneration money. We're talking about um, communications directly with that uh, defendant. And for the non-lawyers on here, that is that is a, a problem. Obviously, when it's a civil case, it's a bigger problem when it's a when it's a case of prosecution. Ronnie Lee Goldie was not in the committee room during the opening statements and calling of witnesses. Several times the chair asked if anyone would like to speak for him and no one responded. The Senate committee acts as a jury with the representatives serving as the prosecutors. The full Senate will likely take up whatever the committee decides. The General Assembly is set to resume for two more days next Wednesday. Officials with one eastern Kentucky county are left scrambling for help after learning the ambulance service there will be leaving in a few months. WYMT's Alyssa Williams has more from Knott County. It was a notice that left several Knott County leaders blindsided. This left us in a very hard spot. In a Knott County Fiscal Court meeting on Monday, Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson said the Fiscal Court received a letter last week that Lifeguard Ambulance Service, the county's main source of emergency medical services, would be leaving the county completely June 17th. 
They were going to give us 90 days to, to be prepared, and which is a very, very short notice. Well, they've had a couple meetings already, and they have met with the, the folks from Lifeguard to try to get a little longer time span for us to, to work this out. Knott County 911 Board Chairman Bobby Thomas says the reason for Lifeguard's departure has not been pinpointed yet. There's, there's several different reasons. It's lack of funding as much as anything else, but uh, as far as details, we've not really got to the bottom of it yet. Thomas says the fiscal court is looking into mutual aid agreements with other neighboring agencies to make ends meet in the meantime. Starting the 2023 year, it's been tough for, for the county. You know, we've had the flooding. You know, we've had the issues with the garbage service, we've had issues with our 911 service, and now we've got the ambulance service. So it's been tough going here, but, you know, the people in the county are resilient and we'll, uh, we'll work it out. It has not been confirmed as to whether the county is looking to buy their own ambulance equipment or not. In Knott County, Alyssa Williams, WYMT, Mountain News. Knott County Judge Executive Jeff Dobson says more meetings are planned for tomorrow in hopes of finding solutions to this issue. We reached out to Lifeguard Ambulance Services for comment, but have not yet heard back. Well, the clouds continue to increase ahead of our increasing shower chances a little bit later on tonight. More warm air, though. Until then, the view from UVA wise, those clouds continuing to work on through the region as we're mild out there. Mid 50s in wise usually means 60s elsewhere, and that's what we're dealing with. Some upper 50s across the portions of the Cumberland Valley right now where the clouds have just started to thicken up just a little bit more. The current view shows those clouds continuing to push in from west to east. And here comes the rain coming in through West Kentucky. Now we'll be pushing into the eastern parts of the state here before too long. So we will continue to see the shower potential tonight. Low 40s out there with those showers on the way in. Details on when we get even warmer and when more showers and storms will be possible in a few minutes. Guys. All right, Evan, thank you. Governor Andy Bashir was back in eastern Kentucky today, breaking ground on a new flood relief home. WYMT's Keaton Hall has more from Letcher County. Governor Andy Bashir was in Letcher County on Tuesday, dedicating a new home for flood survivors. We've got about five groups that came together to fund this house that's having the concrete board behind us. It's for uh, Bill and Jason Gross, uh, who were displaced by the flood and are in one of our travel trailers right now. This is just the second home to be built partially with funds from the Team Eastern Kentucky Flood Relief Fund. And it's just really special. I guess it's what we're supposed to do as human beings. As people of faith and values, we're supposed to be there for one another, and that's exactly what all these groups and community members have come together and, and done. Nobody worried about credit. Bill and Jason Gross's new home is built by Letcher County's Homes Incorporated, and it's out of the floodplain. Yes, I thank God. I thank, yes, I I thank God yes, I that, 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 that we're getting a house. Yes. Sure we're doing Governor Bashir said they now have plans to build 13 homes for flood survivors with Homes Incorporated. In Letcher County, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. The Team Eastern Kentucky Flood Relief Fund is providing $75,000 per home built. Asplund and the LKLP Career Center partnered together to host two job fairs today. One was in Leslie County, the other was in Perry County. Regional Supervisor Stephen Pennycuff says his team accepts people from all walks of life. He says it's more than a job fair, but a chance to give more to the community. Uh, you know, provide, uh, help provide a reliable electrical service that, uh, that hopefully will bring in additional um, businesses and things like that that help uh, not only grow the communities but grow our company as well. He says they have experienced job shortages within the company and says he hopes this helps to fill several positions.